<laughs> Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of North Flight Images, and in this video, I'm going to have a look at an external screen for my laptop here. Why have I got an external screen here for this? Well, um, I use this laptop, carry it about quite a lot, use it for testing, uh, use it for when I'm doing profiling, hence this is a profiling target sitting here. Um, when I'm doing work, I was at Epson recently testing a very large printer, far too big to get in this house, so I needed to take all my profiling gear with me. Um, this is Uperfect uh, Umax 22 touchscreen. Now, uh, they do several of these. Now, I put, I put some notes in the links to the different uh, screens and things you can get for this. But this is a really nice little, nicely built screen. It's aluminium case. It's got a flip out stand on the back. Comes with a very nice carry case here. Uh, this is soft inside, so it's not going to mark the screen or anything. Um, this is when I was recently down at Epson doing the testing. Um, I've set it up so that at the moment it's plugged into here. Um, it has three inputs at the side here, an HDMI and two USB-C. Now, if I connect USB-C from this directly to this, it will power it. Although for best use, it's ideal to use a separate USB power supply. So I'm using one of the sockets for a signal from this. One is connected to a power supply that comes with it. Um, if you're going to be using it much, it's a good lead with it, but you might want to get yourself a long USB power lead, but it does need to be a USB power lead for that to do it. It doesn't use much power. Um, I've had it running for a while and it's slightly warm at the back here where all the, obviously where the electronics are, where it plugs in. Um, Interesting enough, I've also got it connected up to an old Mac here, but I'll, I'll come back to that later. Anyway, the specs of this 22 inch, it's QHD, so it is uh, 2560 uh, pixels across. If I connect it up to other stuff, it will run 1920, so full HD, 1920 by 1080, it works fine with that. Um, the inputs here, the it comes with uh, some convenient little U adapter things. So this one lead is plugged in here and you can see it poking out the side. The other leads go in through the U adapters so they're out of the way around the back. Uh, you can adjust it. Um, it is a touch screen. Uh, there are non touch screen versions. It's sRGB uh, gamut. Now I see some people thinking, but Keith, you do printing and stuff. How could you use a small gamut monitor like this? Particularly if you've seen some of my other reviews, you know, I like using large monitors. Um, it's one of the reasons why I was happy to have a look at this because great as this laptop is, and it's a very nice screen on the MacBook Pro. Uh, this one here is one of the newer ones. Um, really fast, runs all the software very well. Um, certainly a higher end screen than my old one, but that's 20 years old. So, you know, there's a bit of a difference between them. But I don't like editing and doing stuff on small screens. I've been used to for years having lots of screen real estate. So I can do something here while I've got this open here. I've got, had this system connected up to uh, my i1 ISIS scanner. Now, as I said, it's sRGB. Um, I've edited for years some of my big prints from years ago were edited on sRGB monitors. That's one's for print. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know the limitations. Uh, you need to understand color management, but you do not need a wide gamut monitor. Now, I don't particularly wouldn't intend editing on this in particular. Now, I've calibrated this screen and the device I used here, uh, Display Plus by Calibrite, um, the screen had out of the box, you can change color temperatures of it. They're on the various settings. I'll show the settings in a moment, but in calibrating it, I noticed it definitely improved the neutrality of the grays. So um, it might have had a little slight pinkish tinge, but you often get that with monitors anyway. Somebody said to me, I've calibrated my monitor and I can't see any difference. Well, consider yourself lucky. It meant you got a spot on monitor that didn't need much adjustment. If you can see a clear difference, and this is for one of the default settings. Now I've calibrated this to D65, which is why I've not got my normal lighting set up here because otherwise this would look dreadful. Um, it would look wrong because I normally work around about 4000K. 
with a screen like this that's not hardware adjustable, you could, using the color controls, get a, an effective color temperature somewhere down around 4000 or something like that, but it would affect the quality of the screen. Screens like this work best at the settings they're meant to work at. Now, I've adjusted it, set it for D65 native, so I've not set it to a particular brightness. Um, you can actually, if I remember, and this is old, if I have one minor issue with it, it's that I always forget which it button is which. They are exactly the same, the buttons. So as long as you start from the top, and remember that's the power, and then work down from that, you won't keep switching your monitor off every time you try and change something. Now, if I go here, there we go. We've got the, mon uh, menu, the main menu. Now, I'll just show as brightness. You see touch controls on it. There's a volume control. There's, there's speakers built into it if you're connected up in a way for, for it to work with speakers and contrast. Here are the inputs. So I've got the different inputs here. Uh, one of them's power. So obviously nothing coming in on that. The other one's this and the other one is HDMI for that one there. You can set the amount of time the uh, display stays there. So it doesn't matter. You won't, you won't uh, it, you, I, I kept forgetting what I was doing and then it would have gone. So I just upped the display time a bit for for the menu. But if we go back here, I can see here we've got, there's the settings, 2560 it's telling me. And I can see that I've left this one set at HDR. Now, um, I've not set it as HDR here in the monitor settings here. So it is changing. It just makes it look a bit brighter. Um, if I do, obviously when I calibrated it, I set everything back to its defaults. There's a DCR mode as well. Um, incidentally, if you're interested in stuff like this for gaming, um, looking at the specs here, and I say I'll put links to all of this lot in the main notes. Um, I noticed that this one, which is the touchscreen one, is only six, only 60 hertz refresh. Now that's fine by me for what I want for it, but they do have, there's a larger 165 hertz one, there's a hundred hertz, yeah. So if you're into using stuff like this for gaming, then yeah, find out whatever you need to know about them. I don't test stuff for gaming at all. Um, yeah, I, I, the games I play are probably years old and they run fine on our old desktop Mac. Uh, there's nothing of any degree of performance whatsoever. There are zillions of YouTube channels which will fill you in with all the details about stuff like this for gaming and the likes of that. No real interest in that for it, uh, for that sort of it. Uh, but uh, other little features of it, I noticed when it came, it had this plastic film over the front um, and it does fold up. You can leave it on. It's just attaches across the top here and the touch works perfectly well through it. Um, but after a while I thought now I'll take that off and I'll just make sure I've got a cleaning cloth because this is a, you know, a shiny finish. It will show marks. This shows marks and it's not a touch screen. Um, the old one here, that's an old matte screen. So that's different on it. But in terms of actual using it, I could connect a mouse in. There's a USB out socket uh, here. It's only a, a, a micro USB, so you will need an adapter probably for most mouse cables, unless you've got one with a, an oddball connector on it. Um, if I just touch here, this is one of the bits where the touch screen are here. You need to remember that this acts as an additional device to here. So I had not got the mouse anywhere over here. So these screens were not working. So I've moved the mouse back over here. Now, I don't use touch a lot for things like this. It's great for demos and stuff. And it is for this, I can go, I can change for the targets. I can set it to actually do a measurement. I haven't got a device attached, so it won't go any further on it. But I can look at the different aspects of, you know, of what we've got here. So that, put that. I can call up information and get details of stuff. So I can measure a patch and get patch information out of it there. If it's useful to you, it's useful to you. Um, I just like it because it's really handy to cart about. And it helps me get, as I said, I'm used to using lots of monitors. I'm used to using sort of large, either very large monitors or multiple monitors. And that's one of those things that when you get used to it, you'll quickly find that working on a, a single small screen is just irritating. But let's just pop 
that. Let's pop the brightness up a little bit. So there's there. As I say, I have calibrated it, but I've only calibrated it effectively for the color temperature. So I've done it to D65. You can use some of the simpler devices. Um, you don't need a top end calibrator like this. It's just I have this because of all the other stuff I do as well. Um, but would I use this for um, editing pictures at a push? But if it's connected to this, I happen to know that this screen it's very good. This is a P3 um, uh, uh, phosphor on it. Well, I say phosphor, I, you know, color space for it. So I would check color on this, but this I would use because of the screen real estate. It's dead easy to catch. And I say, you know, we're a nice bag and the bag is soft on the inside. So perhaps that'll uh, help protect the screen a bit there. But yeah, keep the screen protector if you're concerned about it. Um, it's, you say, putting on and off like that can be a bit inconvenient. Anyway, as I said, this was connected up to this USB-C with a power supply. But let me just wake up my laptop here, my old laptop. If I want to switch over like that, let's switch over to HDMI. Let the laptop, so it's an old laptop, 20 year old laptop. And there we go. Um, it's connected up. What I've got here is a display. Uh, it, it's not display port or anything. It's an old sort of multi-pin display connector, an adapter from that to HDMI, HDMI into here with a separate power supply. Um, I've not calibrated it on this. Uh, I haven't fished out my old calibrating kit, but I could calibrate it here on this old one here. This is just running, um, this is just the BBC website. Um, one of the stories today, uh, apparently this hawk here had been attacking people in a village and it's been captured. There you go. Wouldn't harm a soul, would it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's yeah, but uh, it's been caught and it's found a new home. They have it, a very nice display. Um, check the specs, I'll put in the notes. I, I would say that I do not do comparative monitor reviews. Um, I do not test enough monitors to be able to say A is better than B or something like that. Um, all my reviews for monitors are always Here's a particular monitor, how well does it do? If you want to find out more, people will do stuff like that and you can check the specs and that and see about it. But um, let's say, no touch screen on this uh, long before you could adapt it for something here. But I use this Mac for sometimes for demos and I've got some old software that I run on it occasionally. But more than anything, I wanted to check that it worked okay, um, which it does. It's, it's, a, it's only 1980 by 10, 1020. 1920 by 1080 when it's connected on this, but there you have it. Um, pop it back there. That one's gone back to that. And I should be able to change the input back. And move things across. There we go. Let's see, between the two. Nice bit of kit. Um, actually useful as well. Um, have a look at the notes for anyone. And if you've got any questions, please do ask. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.